Good morning, LED boys and girls. How are you? I hope all of you had a wonderful week knowing God and following Him. Today, in this Sunday morning, let's start our worship by praising our God's name together.
plans I have for you This is the Lord's declaration Plans for your well-being Not for disaster To give you a future and a hope To give you a future and a hope Thank you for this day at church. Help us to learn more about you and listen well as the teachers and Pastor Han teach us more about you. Thank you for letting us dedicate today for worshiping and praising you. In Jesus' name I pray, Amen. Our Bible passage today is on Zechariah chapter 9, verse 9. Zechariah chapter 9 verse 9. Let's read it together. Rejoice greatly, daughter Zion. Shout, daughter Jer Jerusalem. See, your king comes to you, righteous and victorious, lowly and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. Good. Let's watch our story video. When God's people stopped rebuilding God's temple, God sent prophets to give his people a message. Zechariah was one of the prophets who told the people what God said. This was God's message. Return to me and I will return to you. God reminded the people about their parents and grandparents and great-grandparents. The prophets told them to stop sinning, but they did not listen. So God had punished the people for their sin. Don't be like them, God said. One night, God gave Zechariah some messages through visions. Zechariah saw eight visions. Each was a different message from God about something that was going to happen. In the first vision, Zechariah saw a man riding on a red horse. Behind him were other horses. They had been patrolling the earth. Everything was calm and quiet, but soon the Lord would punish his enemies. The Lord's house would be rebuilt and his cities would be blessed again. In the second vision, Zechariah saw four horns. These stood for Israel's enemies. Zechariah also saw four craftsmen who would defeat those enemies. Next, Zechariah saw a man going out to measure Jerusalem. But the city could not be measured because it was too big for walls. Instead, the Lord would be a wall of fire around it. In the fifth vision, Zechariah saw a solid gold lampstand, which showed how all the Lord's plans would happen because of his spirit. 
Then Zechariah saw a flying scroll, which was a curse on everyone who disobeyed God. In the seventh vision, a woman sat inside a basket. She represented the wickedness of those who worshiped false gods. She was lifted up and taken back to Babylon. In the eighth vision, Zechariah saw four chariots, like the horses of the first vision. They would patrol the earth. God told Zechariah to collect silver and gold from the people. Use the gold and silver to make crowns, he said, and place them on the head of Joshua, the high priest. Joshua's crowns meant that a special king was coming to bring peace for everyone. Look, your king is coming to you. He is righteous and victorious, humble and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey, Zechariah said. God promised to bless his people and punish the rest of the nations for their sin. One day, everyone will worship the Lord. God was going to help his people and give them a different kind of king. Jesus is the king who came and rode humbly on a donkey, just as Zechariah said. Because Zechariah's prophecy came true in Jesus, we can have hope and forgiveness of sins when we trust in Jesus. Wow, awesome story. Let's see the three lessons that we can learn from today's story. Lesson number one, God gives us strength to obey. That's right. Guys, have you ever felt something was impossible? God's people felt that way about finishing the temple. They'd been away from their home for 70 years, and now they were back in Jerusalem with this huge construction project. It was really hard work, and their enemies did not, didn't want them to succeed. People were struggling and they ended up giving up on the temple construction project. God sent Zechariah to encourage the Israelites at just the right time. If you feel discouraged to do the right thing, remember that God is with you and He cares about you and He wants you to succeed. Lesson number two. Zechariah said, Messiah is coming. Zechariah saw eight visions. They meant that the Lord would punish his enemies and protect his people from the enemies. He also said that God would finish the construction of the temple through the help of the Holy Spirit. And he said that those who disobeyed God would be taken back to Babylon. But to those who obey him, his anger would be taken away. Zechariah had some strict messages to those who disobeyed God. Zechariah told the people to remember why they were sent to Babylon in the first place. It was the consequence of their disobedience, of their sin. And he encouraged the people to not be like their grandfathers who turned away from God. God told the people to return to Him and turn away from sin. And finally, Zechariah told the most important promise of God to His people to encourage them. And it was the message that Messiah would come. Lesson number three, Jesus is the humble King. When Jesus came to the earth, fulfilling the promise of God through Zechariah, the Israelites were expecting him to be a strong political or military leader, like a general with a strong army or a powerful weapon. But Jesus came riding on a donkey, like prophet Zechariah said. In those times, kings used to ride on mules or horses. Mule is a hybrid animal between a horse and a donkey. It was bigger and faster than a donkey. And 
common people used to ride on donkeys. A donkey in that way was a symbol for humility and peace. We can learn that who Jesus was by seeing these kind of things. Jesus was a humble king. Yes, and it is not that he didn't have the power from the heaven. Jesus was powerful. The Bible says that if he wanted, Jesus could ask God and God would send an army of angels to help him right away. But Jesus chose to obey God's plan that was written in the Old Testament. Jesus is the humble king because he completely obeyed God. Even though he had the strength and option to not do it. So we can choose to follow Jesus. He, we will never be able to obey God perfectly like Jesus did. But when we try and ask God for help, we can get closer and closer to him. And all this is only possible because Jesus died for our sins on the cross. And now we have forgiveness when we trust in Jesus. So let's trust God and in Jesus and follow him. Amen. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you so much for keeping your promise and sending us the Messiah, your son, Jesus, your one and only son to save us. Help us to trust in you and to show that we trust in you by obeying your commands. Thank you for loving us and caring us and giving us strength to obey you when we ask you. Help us to love you. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Good job, everyone. Today, let's do our activity page to learn more about this story and more about God. I hope you enjoyed today's service and see you all next week. Bye!